When something is good, people tend to copy it. That's a concept that stretches to just about any community or niche that you can think of. Music is copied. Fashion is copied. Art is copied. So it only makes sense that in the volatile world of video games, copycats are pretty much going to be guaranteed. We've seen big culturally relevant titles like Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty, Minecraft, and Halo become so popular that the rest of the gaming industry can't help but try their hand in making their own versions of those winning formulas. The games that come out of this phenomenon are called clones, or knockoffs, or ripoffs, whatever you want to call them. And as negative as that connotation may sound, they're really not all that bad. Some video game clones, while derivative, are actually pretty good by their own merit. A lot of them even end up surpassing the games that they are originally knocking off. But despite all that, there's one video game that despite being culturally relevant, pretty simple to understand and most importantly old, remains an anomaly as despite meeting all the criteria for when a video game usually gets copied, it still has yet to be cloned in a proper manner. That video game is Gary's Mod. Gary's Mod is in a really strange spot. It's undeniably very popular, has had a huge impact on the internet, and has cobbled together with sticks and masking tape. But despite all that, there really aren't any competitors or clones of Gary's Mod. If someone asked you to name Minecraft clones, you'd probably be able to rattle off a few pretty quickly. But when it comes to Gary's Mod, the only clones that it has are so bad, miss the mark so much, and are usually so janky that it's almost not even fair to make fun of them. So today we're, uh, we're, we're, we're gonna make fun of them. Uh, yeah. Have you ever looked at Gmod and gone, Wow, I really wish this game were $3 on Steam and possibly a Bitcoin miner. If you have, you are A, very very weird, and B, very very lucky, because that's exactly what Modern Play is. Modern Play is an Unreal Engine 4 ripoff of Gary's Mod that's on Steam. It's a Russian-made game that lists pretty much no information about itself or its developer anywhere online. As far as I can tell, this game was made pretty much to just trick people into spending $3 on it, but it actually unintentionally delivers a product that's kind of worth playing in the process. By default, what you get in modern play amounts to basically nothing. There's a very limited selection of super generic weapons, maps, and props that clearly had no effort put into them, and stupid NPCs that just barely meet the bare minimum requirements to be considered AI. I really want to describe this game as janky, but I, I don't know if that would be the right word for it. Gmod is janky, that's what makes Gary's Mod Gary's Mod, but modern play is just... nasty. I don't think there's even a single original asset made for this game. As far as I can tell, every single asset has been lovingly ripped off the Unity Asset Store, which is pretty par for the course with these types of games. Credit where credit is due though, there is some amount of effort put into modern play, I guess. It has peer-to-peer -peer multiplayer that from what I can tell works just fine, and comes with some pretty neat stuff like embedding YouTube videos, text screens, and a prop resizer tool, which Gary's Mod for some reason still has yet to introduce. The driving is also just straight up better than pretty much any vehicle, official or otherwise, I've ever driven in Gary's Mod. Uh, I mean, it still feels really bad in modern play, but it feels better than Gmod, uh, I guess. Weapons are the bare minimum. They feel like duty, and the view models lack even the most basic of polish. As much as people hate on Gmod's default arsenal being limited, you start to miss it quite a bit when your only two weapons are the nastiest AK ever, paired with the ugliest Glock known to man. The gravity gun model is also just insane. I, I can't even tell what this is supposed to be. It looks like somebody made a gun out of like a grub or something? Uh, I don't know. The tool gun, instead of being a cool revolver, is just your fingers making a gun shape, which I mean... I mean, okay, that that's, that's kind of based, actually. Now, all of that should be just about all there is to this game. A pretty boring ripoff that's severely lacking in content. But modern play comes with a twist. The one thing that modern play has over most cheap Steam shovelware is that it actually has a workshop. Like a real proper one on Steam, just like Gary's Mod. As you can imagine, it's mostly full of people porting over stuff from Gmod that the game doesn't come with by default. Think things like GM Construct and Half-Life 2 player models. But people have also taken the porting over full game modes like Murder and even an infinitely generating Minecraft game mode. Some of the stuff on here is actually pretty interesting, solely for the fact that you straight up can't do it in Gmod. For example, the Unreal Engine has no map size limits, which means you can drive around with your friends on the entire Grand Theft Auto San Andreas map. And also Dr. Kleiner is there, so that's cool. GM Construct is here of course, lovingly ported over from Source to Unreal, and while there's not a lot to comment on regarding this map, 
Whoever reported it included the secret room and a screenshot of them actually developing the map in the Unreal Editor, which I think is pretty hilarious and lends a touch of soul to this otherwise soulless game. It is kind of interesting to see things that are uniquely Source Engine get ported over to a brand new top of the line engine, even if the end result is usually pretty gross. It's also funny to see that the second you make a Gmod clone with Workshop support, it'll inevitably just get flooded with cool Garry's mod stuff in favor of whatever generic assets you shipped it with. All in all, I guess there is some sort of potential in modern play thanks to its Workshop support. It'll never, ever in a million years compete with Garry's mod, but there's at least an hour or two of fun to be had, and it's three dollars, so... I don't care. Modern Play was a low effort asset flip that ended up being kind of okay. Modiverse is a high effort project that ended up sucking bad. I don't even know where to start with this game, man. The menu is insanely complicated, doesn't make any sense, and by default the game has zero assets in it at all. All of the official assets have to be downloaded from the workshop, which is insane, just for the record, so everyone's clear. That is insane. Imagine having to download Dr. Kleiner from the Gmod Workshop, that would be weird. The lighting and stuff isn't bad, I guess, and looks pretty par for the course, but all the models and weapons and everything really are animated poorly and just don't look good. Which to be fair, they wouldn't be interesting looking even if they were well made, so I guess it doesn't matter that much. By default, the player models you get are a generic soldier guy, a bunch of variations of generic sci-fi warrior, and also a wolf for some reason. I, I, I don't know. The weapons look like they've been ripped out of a mobile game, and the view models are god-awful and nasty to look at. If you shoot an automatic weapon at all and then switch to a pistol, the automatic weapon will continue to fire forever and ever until it runs out of ammo and you can't stop it. This is, this is a retail product on Steam, by the way, just, to, just so you know. There are so many problems with Modiverse that it's hard to even list them all off. First off, putting the official assets on the workshop means I don't know what the hell is official and what is not, so when I judge the quality of the game I have to judge literally everything. This game, despite being more earnest than basically any other game on this list, also manages to somehow be the worst one. According to some Steam reviews, this game was meant to be a competitor to Pavlov VR, which is hilarious to even think about. Apparently the guy behind Modiverse is the guy responsible for porting Call of Duty Zombies to Pavlov, which sucks because those maps are really really cool, and this is... doo-doo. I really do wish I could rip on this game in a deep, intricate way, but the truth is there's just nothing here, and it sucks. There's pretty much nothing redeemable about the whole experience, except these props that are straight up just like real scans of real human people. And you, you can spawn this guy named Manuel and he does a little gay ass dance. That's pretty cool. So that's Modiverse. It's a Gary's Mod ripoff that is so bad that it is literally less fun than Gnome Jigsaw Puzzles, which is a game where you just solve Gnome Jigsaw Puzzles. Oh man. Oh hell yeah. Oh yeah. Kaboom. Nuclear bomb gif. Go mod is G mod but with an O in it. But it's also a mod for Half Life 1 that aims to be for it what G mod was for Half Life 2. This one's a lot less of a ripoff and more of a fan project, but it's still running off with G mod sauce, so it deserves to be on this list. Go mod, to be honest with you, is not bad for what it sets out to be. It sets out to be Gold Source's version of G mod, and it accomplishes that pretty well. Along with Half-Life 1 assets, you can spawn stuff and play maps from a variety of Gold Source games like CS 1.6 and Half-Life's expansions, which makes it pretty interesting actually. The only problem I have with it is that it came out in 2010, six years after Gmod did, and it frankly just doesn't really serve a purpose beyond novelty. Maybe if you're someone who wants to make films or YouTube content or something in Gold Source, this could be useful, but you're probably better off just using cheats or something. It does have its own version of GM Construct, and as you could probably guess, I think that's pretty cool. If there's one thing these Gmod ripoffs are useful for, it's to see weird alternate versions of GM Construct, and GoMod delivers on that pretty nicely, I think. I actually used to play GoMod before I had a computer good enough to run Gary's Mod, and I'm sure there's plenty of people who were or are in a similar situation, so I can't hate on it too much. Also, I guess the developers behind this mod saw how popular JB Mod got when it came back to life, so they decided to do the very same thing and also rebooted GoMod and called it GoMod Reborn. As far as I can tell, it's just the original Go mod with a bit more effort put into it to make it feel more modern and more like Gmod, so that's cool, I guess. But for me personally, I need to be able to make ragdolls slam their head against walls at 900 miles an hour, and Go mod will never ever be able to deliver that experience, and for that reason, it is fail. Sorry. 
Listen, I don't really want to talk about Roblox unless I'm being held at gunpoint, but it came to my attention that Roblox has a thriving community of people making Gmod clones, and Ray's mod is supposedly the best one. Now, who is Ray? Uh, the Mexican guy from Achievement Hunter, I think. I guess he made a mod. I, I don't. Ray's mod. I'm I'm sorry to say this. I'm I apologize in advance. Is actually surprisingly decent. If not for the gameplay, just by virtue of being free and being able to run on probably a literal potato, it's something. It has its own spawn menu, lets you play with Half-Life 2 weapons, has a weird system for mounting add-ons, and as much as it makes me very mad, the driving in this game also feels better than most Gary's mod vehicles. Sorry. I'm not the biggest Roblox fan in the world, but the fact that Ray's mod opts to use Robloxified versions... Robloxified? Robloxified? Robloxified versions of Half-Life 2 NPCs for their spawn menu is actually kind of charming. It's one thing to just port over the NPCs and give them nasty, gross AI, but it's another thing to actually put some effort into the presentation of a game like this. If you're looking for an exact replica of the default Gary's Mod Sandbox experience, this game comes pretty damn close. I mean, it still feels bad, don't get me wrong. Roblox movement is just complete and utter garbage, and the physics are bare minimum, nothing. But at least it's something, right? It's got, uh, it's got Mario. I like Mario. I can imagine being a little booger eater who can't afford Gary's mod, and I guess Ray's mod would be a pretty acceptable alternative if I couldn't play Gmod. Vmod is different from every other game on this list. Not because it's secretly good or anything, but because you can play it on your mobile phone. I'm not even going to pretend like there's any depth to this game. I joined a server on the worst knockoff of GM Construct that I've ever seen, tried to give this random Indian kid a piece of wood, and then he blew my head off, which meant that I was forced to watch an ad for a game called Raft. So, uh, that's... that's the game. Well, those were some pretty based and cringe Gary's Mod ripoffs. I'm not gonna lie, I dug pretty hard to find some games that are actually making an earnest attempt to knock off Gary's Mod, and what I found was pretty much nothing anyways. The fact that Gmod really is just too unique to be copied makes it pretty cool. Gary's Mod has been around for the rise and fall of franchises, a turbulent gaming industry that completely changes overnight, and countless fads and eras of the internet that we'd rather not talk about. Despite all of that, it still stands strong and remains both important to the internet and also irreplicable. Thanks for watching, I've been Rant Lobber, and I am not responsible for any damage you cause yourself by going out and playing these god awful games. Thank you, and bye bye.